All right, what's up guys? So this episode we're gonna be starting and hopefully we'll see how long this video actually ends up being. You guys will know by the title, obviously, if we finish the body work or not. But we're gonna start the body work on this Impreza. So last episodes, um, if you guys have been watching, I'll put it up above, we got it running. Well, we got the engine training in. in the next episode we got it running. Uh, interior got put together, so. Um, I just got that vent in finally. The other one was struggling me, so I just left that one over there for now. Um, but today we're starting the body work. So I wiped down the trunk and I wiped down this quarter panel because I'm going to start by just sanding the edges of this quarter panel to make them smooth, make them not raise, um, so I can work on molding this quarter panel on. I also put two bolts in for the wing just so I can test fit that, see how it's gonna be fitting, which it actually fits really pretty good. So um, they have t basically a threaded insert here and also one over here. So I'm gonna utilize those as well uh, once it comes time to actually fitting the spoiler on for real. Um, this is just a mock fit, because you can see that the front is kind of, there's a little bit of a gap right there. I'm hoping once I put those two other um, bolts in, it'll suck it down a little bit, if not, it's no big deal about the, the extra gap. But the wing, look, the wing looks good. Um, these STI style wings on non-wide body ones of these, in my opinion, doesn't necessarily fit. I think the wing itself is a little too big for a non-wide bodied version when this thing, you can see how much wider it is right here. So the back of it is gonna look very, very aggressive. And I do like that it actually has a third brake light in it and it has the wiring for it. So what I'm gonna do is that on the factory spoiler over here, I'm just gonna cut the connector off of it and then wire it onto this one so that it plugs right into this harness right here. So I can still use the factory harness. But if you guys have seen all the other videos, I used to have a red trunk on this because it was a red car but there was a good sized dent right here. And I had this white trunk at home on my white donor car, which just has a paint chip right here that I just need to sand down. Other than that, there's no dents on it. It just needs a light scuff with uh, some sandpaper and then this will be ready to be wrapped. Um, same, with the, same with the wing. The wing just needs uh, just to be cleaned up first and then just scuffed up and then that's ready to be wrapped as well. So like I said, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, roof molding off, which is actually, I looked on Subaru's site last night, and it looks like I can actually just order a new drip molding through Subaru. I think it was like 80 bucks for the, the molding, and then the clips for it are like $2 each. So if I end up bending this, or if something ends up happening to it, it's, it's good to know that I can actually, uh, it looks like I could actually order another one. So I'm gonna start by just taking this off because when I'm sanding here, I don't want to actually accidentally damage the molding right here. So I'm gonna take that off just so I can sand it down right here. And obviously I'm gonna work over here. I, I can't do, I wanted to tape off this glass, but of course I forgot my tape at home. Um, so I won't be able to do that. So I'll just have to be real careful with sanding right here for now. And then I'll just work my way down and get all of these, um, holes where I had to put the self tappers in to hold the quarter panel on. So I'm, I'll do all that. The trunk will be up so I can get this area here. And then that will be what I'll do for the quarter panel for now. And then same with this side, once I get more tape and I actually, I just use like water to clean off the other side. Once I have some actual cleaner, I'll clean this side off as well. And then I'll sand that one. All right, so I got the hood bolted on. Um, a little tricky to do by myself, and I also don't have a hood prop or any, like, hood supports, so that was fun to try and get, um, with, you know, get on without it just falling back down on me. But now the whole front end is like...
Okay, so just like you guys saw in the time lapse, I just did what I'll call the first initial uh, sand of this. I was just using 80 grit on that uh, on that palm sander, and it came out pretty good. It knocked down most of the extra panel bond that I had, um, just kind of glopped on here to try and reduce as much of the body filler that I'm going to need in order to mold everything together. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out an easier way to get up into here and then this little area right here if I have to hand sand it I will um, if I could find like a smaller if I could find like a smaller sander I'll use that um, this is pretty much ready to now just build up just a little bit more I wanted to make it as small as possible I've molded not this kit but a different kit before on a um, another coop and I I had it molded up to like here, um, very very thin up here, not just like glopped on. But I want to try and get this to stay like here and down if I can. So right now I don't know how well the camera camera probably won't pick it up that well. But right now, obviously besides having pits and stuff, it actually does transition really quickly right here. So that's good. Um, same with over here. I'm happy that. This fiberglass kit is actually a fairly thin fiberglass kit. The last one that I said that I molded, um, it was a really thick kit. So there was a really big raised area right here, which luckily with this, with the panel bond that I have right here, and me sanding down this upper edge of the actual kit, it's actually coming out fairly flush. So then when you put the trunk down, I won't, I won't close it completely, but when you put the trunk down, there's not that big of a lip right here from obviously trunk being stock height and the added layer of the fiberglass. Um, the other kit you could like easily see that there was a, a difference in height, but this kit, I could do a little bit more sanding on that to make it more flush. And um, cause you can see the gloss black is where the sander didn't touch yet. And then where it becomes like a matte gray is actually where the sander was touching. So what I'm gonna do is get a block and then sand this smooth to see if I can level it out. Same, obviously, with this side when I go to do this side. But if I could block that out so it's nice and flat and flush with the trunk, that'll be really nice. Same with right here, do the same thing. And then, again, whether if I need to hand sand or find a smaller sander for this tail light area, because obviously that larger sander is not gonna fit in this area. Luckily this doesn't need much sanding, there's a little bit of an edge right here, and then obviously the unevenness of just the fiberglass mold itself, so I gotta sand all this down. But for the most part, it's pretty much good. Um, the kit itself is really nice, really straight, so I just did a quick little pass over just to knock down some of the gloss just so I can see everything, but that's all good. Obviously a little bit more finishing sanding from where the uh, screws were. Um, but basically, obviously, it's just more the outline of the quarter panel that needs the most work. And then same with here, I'm going to have to get a block. And same with the upper trunk area, um, flatten this out and smooth this out. So then when the door closes, it's a nice smooth body line all the way down. And then down here, I'm not going to worry too much about this area and underneath. Because once the side skirt is fitted on, it fits up to this and you're not gonna see that. So I just gotta work on this transition right here, because this area you will see, um, also as part of the side skirt, you will see this area. So once I get this piece and up in here all molded, and like one with the body, is when I'll put the side skirt on. I have to trim the side skirt to fit this area, which then I'll have to trim it to fit the area that I molded. All right, so look you guys just saw I got the first sand down on this one. I ended up actually just sanding this one off camera as well. Um, the sander I'm using is just, well, yep. The other day I was using an air sander. This time I have my Milwaukee one. But I also just threw the first coat of this uh, fiberglass reinforced Bondo to start molding the panel to the actual car. So I don't know how well it'll pick up on camera but I just made a decent amount of it. Luckily, like I said before, this side didn't really need much. This side, on the other hand, there was a little bit more of a ridge right where the quarter panel 
met the C pillar, but um, this one just took a little bit more of the fiberglass stuff. But um, right now, obviously, this is just the initial bit. Obviously, once this gets sanded, then we do the actual bondo, which is a lot smoother because it doesn't have the fiberglass strands because you can see all the texture. That's all the fiberglass that's in it. So I had to build up this area. I sanded this smooth to try and match with the trunk. Um, I just did a little bit of fiberglass bondo just to build it up a little bit. Same with this side. This side I actually used more because it was a little bit more of a dip right there. Um, had to fill a little bit right here where it was in. This side is luckily flat. This side I had to build up a little bit because the uh, quarter panel itself didn't actually match up with the body, like you know where the actual tail light would go. So I had to build that up a little bit. Um, built this up because it kind of pushed in a little bit too much right there. So now all that will be sandable once it's dry. This is the area where I accidentally had something drop on this panel when I, when I had it at home. So it has a crack in it, so I had to sand down and um, this is still just the initial sand down of that. Other than that, now pretty much for both cord panels, I have to wait for this to dry, wait for it to harden up. On this side, I actually started molding the bottom part in. Um, I didn't sand the door jam on this side. I actually did on the other side. So let me show you that. It's a little dark, so I don't know how much I'll be able to show you, but it actually, is sanded smooth and it's actually fairly straight um, there's a little bit right here I can see but like I said this is just the initial sanding I'm waiting for my sanding blocks to actually come in so I can actually start fine fine sanding everything to make sure it's all smooth but for right now the initial knockdown of all the panel bond that I had and now the fiberglass um, well it's still just all be the orbital sander and just basically just the whole knocking down as much material as I need to get off and then I'll start fine sanding everything after that. All right, so I got a little bit more work done on this thing. Um, you guys just saw the fiberglass uh, Bondo. I sanded that down and now I'm on to the second stage, at least what I would call the second stage of Bondo, which is now just the regular body filler, which this side I sanded it down and it's actually pretty curved it meets the body line. You can't really tell too much because there's no gloss to it or anything, but it's as much shaped as I can make it, uh, which is my um, palm sander. I'm waiting for my blocks to come in to actually hand sand the rest of it. And then obviously I have to fill all these small little holes. Um, same with over here, you can still see there's uh, some area that's not sanded just because the trunk is in the way. I'm gonna have to take the trunk off in order to get to that. But this area, basically from here down, I was, I was able to reach with the sander. So all this is pretty much good. Just needs a finished uh, hand sand on it. Same with down here. This is all set besides hand sanding. And then this area was too curved to reach my sander in there. So I got to hand sand all of that. Um, other than that, this side is pretty much the same. Uh, I've got a hand sand down here. Um, I had to build up this area right here a little bit uh, with the uh, fiber reinforced bondo. Uh, now I just got to hand sand all that. Um, just like the other side, hand sand here. Do finished block work here, finished block work over here. This right here, I already did a second stage of bondo and now it just needs a finishing hand sand. And now the OEM rocker panel now molds into the fiberglass panel. So now this is the shape and stuff that I need in order to now test fit the side skirt and trim the side skirt how I need in order to get it to fit and, and in order to make it look flush. So now that's pretty much good. Just need to do a finishing hand sand. And the big thing, you guys can see I got the doors on. Um, I had my buddy help me out last night, uh, put the doors on, no, two nights ago, put the doors on. Um, not an easy job to do, even with two people, not that easy to do. So I've got the fenders back on for now, um, just so I could get door gaps right. I actually sanded this area right here, so now the gap is even all the way across. Um, the previous owner had like rain guards or something on this, so there was a ton of double sticky tape left, so I had to use my eraser wheel and 
get all of that off. It was all the way down. The other side was actually even worse. It was on there thicker. But I got all of it off. I'd go all the way down. Literally all the way until here is where like the mark ends. So ton of ton of stuff over there. The doors don't completely shut right because I've got weather strips and stuff in the way. But to me, it's crazy to see a good amount of this thing white. So if I close the trunk, it's pretty crazy to see a lot of white on this thing. Um, other thing I did is I sanded the um, inner fender arch of this thing just because when I sprayed the undercoating, um, I left this open by accident. So all that got undercoated. So sanded it all smooth. So now when I go to wrap it, I can tuck it under here and it'll actually have something to stick to. Uh, it's now the next day. Um, I went to AutoZone and I got some, and I got some supplies. So I got some bonding primer and I finally got my sanding blocks the other day. Got some sandpaper from AutoZone and I blocked the rear quarters, that area right there, all of this, and then also above the window. Um, I'm gonna wait to do this area in here to finish it until I get this thing off the lift because now with the doors on, I can't open it completely because it'll contact that. So I'm gonna get this whole portion of the quarter panel done and then we'll be able to take it off the lift. So, hand sanded all this in here to now make the arch just right. I don't have a tail light here, so I can't test fit it, but that's the next step for that side. Same with this side, I already started hand sanding it, but I haven't primed it yet. I think I need to sand it a little bit more up here, um, but for the most part, it is now taking its shape. Uh, this is now all sanded with 180, when I was using 80 grit before. Just I was using 80 to knock it down. This is all nice and smooth now. It's all flush. Um, I, I think I could close the trunk. If I close the trunk, now I'm not going to close it completely, but it sits pretty well flush with it, and it's nice and smooth transition. And I'm super, super happy with that. Same with this side. You can, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can really see, but it is still a nice, barely even a lip from here to here. So that is super nice. I'm really excited about that. So it's not gonna be a giant space in between or a giant gap. And then what I've done now is that when I was at AutoZone, I grabbed a thing of glazing putty, which is what I would consider the final step of Bondo. So fiber, what I, now I am no body shop expert at all. I am extremely, extremely new at any of this. So please, don't take anything that I say serious if it's not true. I'm not 100%, but this is how I see it and how I'm doing it. So the fiberglass Bondo is the buildup, even though it didn't really need much. It, since it has the fiberglass in it, it's strong, it'll hold, and it's not gonna crack or just fall off. So that was the initial buildup, especially of this area and a little bit of right here. Then once that is sanded smooth, which is what I did, all those little gaps and crevices and whatever else of the smoothing that I needed to do, the transition, you use the regular bond, like the body filler uh, from Bondo. So that is what I used. It's all right here as you can see it, and it's all underneath here. I did up here as well with it along down here. I need to do a little bit more down there, and still again all the way through here. Then you sand all that down, so see you can still see a little bit right here. That was a low spot. Um, all of this still has a little bit of it. Um, all of those are just low spots that the body filler now picked up. As you can see, it's all right here as well. Um, and then once that is sanded smooth, then you apply the glazing putty, which is really, really finer and is actually more like, more liquidy. And that is supposed to now go into all the fine, the super, super fine holes and divots which is now, I, I had a couple areas right here, and then again, on this side, I had a couple small areas around here, um, just from the transition. So now the glazing putty for that is supposed to fill up all the small holes. Now I sand this smooth, and hopefully, it should all be smooth. Um, it shows like rock, it says like rock chips and stuff can uh, fill it, so the whole front of the hood, that was all rock chips. 
I just took some time and I put the glazing putty all over the small little rock chips. So now I just have to sand all that smooth. Right now it's wet, so I can't, but sand all that smooth. And after, all there should be is just little tiny specks of where the rock chips were. Or if there was like a low spot anywhere on the hood, it'll fill up that as well. So, now there's not much more I can do here today um, until this glazing putty cures, which it only said like 20 minutes, and it actually is, it actually is getting pretty, pretty hard already. Front fenders just need a little bit more of sanding, and I forgot when I was home last night I wanted to trace, make a, basically make a template um, on one of the original steel fenders of this opening that I need to make for the corner lights, which I forgot to do last night because I was going to do that today. But now when I come back tomorrow, I'll uh, make, sure to, make sure to make the, st um, the stencil for it tonight. So then when I come here tomorrow, I can cut those out so I can test fit the lights. Once those are done, once that is, once the light is ready to go in, then I can just do a finishing sand of the whole fender. And I can either take them off or leave them on, and those are actually ready to be wrapped. Alright, so just off camera, I sanded down the glazing putty and made it completely smooth. Thankfully, that filled all the extra gaps that I had. What you guys see right now, which is the gray, I actually sprayed a primer down next on it. I taped it off like up here and I sprayed the primer down on it and then I wet sanded the primer once it was dry. You guys won't really be able to tell on camera, but it is now 100% molded. Same with all the way down here and down here. <clears throat> so I brought my new tail lights to the shop and I just test fitted the tail light to make sure that this right here um, does actually match the tail light and I did it on both sides and they both do. So that means I'm done sanding in here now. Um, as you can see, just touch up on the rear bumper. Um, there's a couple areas um, that just had a couple little tiny like just imperfections from the mold. Um, no one would probably ever see it except for just me right now looking at it. So once those are sanded down, the bumper is good. I'm just going to do a single sand on the bumper just to scuff it up a little bit. And then this is pretty much ready to be wrapped. I have this area down here that I drew that I need to take the bumper off and just cut that because once the muffler gets brought up a little bit, it's on the contact right there. So I got to trim that out of the way. This side I haven't wet sanded yet, so you'll actually be able to see the gray on here. Um, I had to use a little bit more glazing putty for right there, and then a couple spots over here. Um, but for the most part, again, I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick up the C pillar right there. But it is, it's smooth. It transitions extremely nice, literally like it would from the factory, which I'm absolutely in love with. And then I'll show you the hood. So the hood I sanded down. I sanded all the glazing putty just so now it's just, glazing putty is pretty much just where the rock chips were. And then <clears throat> I also sprayed some white primer slash sealer for all of it as well. So now the hood also just needs a wet sand um, and then the vents and hood scoop need to be taken out of it. And then the hood is also ready to be wrapped. All right, so it's now the next day. I've gotten a couple of the hood, well the hood scoop and that vent out. One of the nuts on this one is stripped out so I need to go to work and get my turbo socket in order to get that off. So that one's almost out. Front bumper is back off because now I'm going to sand it. It's over there on the bumper stand. Um, I put in the new headlights. There's some fairly cheap projector um, headlights. I put some LED high low beam bulbs in. They'll do good for now until I decide what I want to do long term. I have another set of headlights on order and it's been, well I ordered them last June and they still haven't showed up. It's been like 10, yeah, nine, ten months now. Um, they are built to order, but I don't know if they're actually supposed to take that long or not. I'm not really sure. Don't know if they're ever going to show up, but so for now I just have some projector ones. And then I bought this white primer from Home Depot white primer that I was going to spray the whole quarter panel with. That's what I was going to do. From here you can see this one's pretty much white. You can't see 
really any of the gray or body filler. So that was going to be my plan. Spray it all white, just so it's all one uniform color. So then when I wrap it, you know, whatever, it looks, it looks white underneath. Not that it really matters. But, um, it ran in a lot of areas. So, a lot of runs through here, a lot of runs up there, a couple runs over here. Um, so now, for the last like 30 minutes or so, I've been waiting for it to dry so I can wet sand this back down again. So I guess this side is just getting one more wet sand than that other side did. Now, looking back, I wish I didn't spray another coat of white on here, but oh well, I learned. Now I learned not to do it on the other side. You can still see it's shiny, so that means it's still wet. So that, honestly, I might have to wait until the next time I'm up here, who knows, uh, depending on how long I'm up here tonight. All right, so I might have skipped around a little bit, but as you can see right now, the weight of the car is actually on the suspension now. I have it on go jacks just because the lift would not come out from underneath the car. The reason why I put it down on the ground was because I needed to be able to open the doors enough to be able to get into the door jam area for right here. So I just need to finish hand sanding that and wet sanding it. And then same with this side. This side is already almost done. Just a little bit more hand sanding. And then this side is all set as well. But now since that's also on the ground, I'll be able to mock up the side skirts, see what I need to trim, and then go from there. Okay, so I've got the passenger side on for now. So you can see the front actually fits super snug, nice right in there. Has that nice little platform right there for me to uh, put some hardware through. Then you come to the inside, it has this lift right here that again, like I said, I want to put like either like a rivet or something, one on either side. But you can see right here, there's a gap. And that's because back here, you can't see. Back there, it's actually bottoming out on the quarter panel. So I need to find, I need a measure to see how much I actually need this to go in. Which you can still see, it comes out quite a bit. So I might just measure what this is right here and then cut that out of it. And then um, what I might do is taper it thinner to over here because I want to try and get this right here to meet up perfectly flush with what I just molded right here to get that to sit right. So I think this piece right here, this part of it, will just hopefully just ride along the top of this right here. But I'm gonna make a couple measurements and then uh, mark some lines and then uh, I'll get to cutting this piece and we'll see uh, how it fits up after. Okay, so that one inch actually made it literally perfect. It's just about to bottom out in here and it sits flush right there. It goes all the way across, it sits flush right here. And then I have a Clico pin right there and a Clico pin over here. I I think once it's final install time, I'll rivet. I'll put two rivets right there. This sits flush with right here. And then in the front, this sits flush as well. So now what I'm going to do is just take my quarter inch drill bit. I'm going to drill a hole right here that goes through this and into the fender. And then I already have a hole started back here. But I'm going to make it bigger to a quarter inch so I can fit a 10 millimeter bolt through it. I'm also going to draw a permanent marker line on this piece because I'm going to chop this portion of it off. And just like that, now I have that area trimmed as well. So I might trim that lower portion of the side skirt just back a little bit more, but once the wider wheel is in, it's going to fill up this area anyway. So you might not be able to actually be able to see that. But now it kind of just it matches that quarter panel. And then I just drilled out the front hole as well for the hardware. So now, this side skirt is technically ready to go on, besides any um, sanding or whatever I need to do to that center area to get the door to close. But now I'm just going to jump over to the driver's side, do the same exact thing. I'm going to take, I'm going to put it on first, then take a measurement of this area to make sure it's still an inch I need to cut out, and then um, I'll catch up with the guys once it looks like this. Okay, now this side went by a lot quicker. So I already have that trimmed, I have that hole pre-drilled. Um, this is all 
sit nice and flush. It'll tuck up a little bit more. You can see there's a little bit of a gap once it's bolted on. Um, that right there is nice and flush. I've got one Clico pin there, one Clico pin over there. And if I move to the front, there we go. I've got that hole uh, started as well. Uh, so now once I take the side screw off, I can drill it. But there we go. So now, now technically the entire body kit has been mocked up. Like legitimately mocked up. So now side skirts just need a final sand. Um, this one, before I put the Clecos in, it kind of like snugly fits there. So I was able to close the door and it actually closes almost completely. So this side closes a lot easier than the other side. Uh, the other side, the door actually has to go up a little bit as well because um, I still have not aligned these doors once I put the uh, when I put them on so I got to take the front fenders back off in order to align it so it might be as simple as just adjusting this door correctly and that might fit totally fine okay bumper is literally not bolted on by anything it's just held on by the bumper beam so that's why there's a little bit of a gap right there but now besides terrible runs in that quarter panel this is pretty much what it's going to look like I'm super happy that the side skirts actually didn't take as long as I thought they would. They're actually fairly simple to cut. I was worried that I was going to have to make some like crazy intricate cut for like behind here. But luckily, um, actually I just needed to do a straight shot and then it fit fine both sides. So now you're going to see it actually comes out of the car a little bit, which is kind of cool. And then we'll do a front angle. There's no front bumper, but... Now you get to see nice thick side skirt right there. Matches up with everything really good. And yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there, guys. Almost there. Almost. We're like, besides the doors, we're like 85% there. The doors themselves are going to be a project. Because um, I want to take these door moldings off. But the downside is that, is that there's holes for clips along it. So I need to uh, take the door panels off and plug all of these holes. So that I'm kind of saving for last. I want to get everything else pretty much ready. And then I'll just tackle the doors. And then um, after that, we'll be smooth sailing. That's why I just want to get everything everything else done so that I can just get the hard part over with right at the end. And then we'll be smooth sailing with just wrapping everything after that. I can't remember in the beginning of this episode if I said that um, we're going to get all the body work done in this one video. But this one video itself has taken me a couple weeks to do. Um, I know you guys, it seems like I was here for probably a couple hours. But I was here for days on days on days on days. So I'm going to end this video here. Next video you're going to see me finalizing the body work. Doing the door modifications that I need to do and getting this thing ready to be wrapped. So, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!